Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to this online session, very, very close to my heart. Uh, for you, uh, for the, the people in the audience that I have joined one, one of our webinars before, you know that I, CSP is one of my favorites. Concentrated Solar Power is what kicked off my career, which is why I'm always delighted to have a session about CSP. And today we're having a session about small scale CSP. Now, if you ask me, of course, I'm partial. I would say that CSP is a really amazing, amazing technology that allowed us to kind of bottle up store the sun and solar energy for when we need it, which is an amazing proposition. However, the way that the markets were uh, at the time, you know, when gas, uh, when, when CSP was kind of making its first uh, push into the market, uh, there was plenty of gas, there was uh, the, the big scale uh, projects that got uh, the cost of CSP down were hard, you know, in terms of actually putting them together. And basically, we ended up in a situation where CSP has grown. You know, we're right now about seven gigawatts or more. Maybe my colleagues in, my, in, the, in the speakers can correct if they have like later and better details. But essentially, it's hard to get off the ground because the large scale uh, projects are hard to permit, are hard to put together, are hard to finance. However, this has not taken away all of the main USPs of CSP, which are mainly the fact that you can both produce energy and store it, which is not a small thing, and actually very, very economically indeed. So in this session, we're going to focus on small scale CSP. As we know, anything larger, any larger scales always gets the costs down, but in smaller scales, we can get really good um, um, results as well if we do things cleverly, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So first, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone in the audience. We have a super, super international panel here today. Uh, we have people both from the U.S. and Australia in this uh, in this um, in this uh, webinar today. But we also have people, obviously, in Europe. So please introduce yourself. Say your name, say your company, and also say where you're joining from today, because we love to see it here uh, as the speakers. Because not only we are the the international ones, uh, so are you guys. And this is really really interesting. CSP has got potential in a lot of places around the world. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. So no, first, I'd like you to get to know a little bit better the presenters today. And to start, let, to let you know that we are actually organizing this webinar in collaboration with Women in Concentrated Solar. Yes, we're all women in this panel. You know, uh, it is very rare that, um, that there'll be all women in a panel. We do a few webinars a year like this, but not very many. There is a lot with all men. But uh, that's not the point. You guys are here because these women really are super experts in this topic that you're learning about today. So let's get to know the ladies. Uh, Sabrina, please, could you introduce yourself so that people can get to know you a little bit better? Thank you very much, Melina. My name is uh, Sabrina Hasni. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening all. Um, so um, I am originally from Algeria um, and uh, I live now in uh, the Netherlands, uh, more specifically in The Hague. Um, I started my career in chemical engineering um, and then I did uh, another degree in solar energy engineering um, where I, I uh, mainly work uh, now in the field of heat electrification um, and uh, and uh, my passion is obviously uh, uh, um, as well in the concentrated uh, solar power um, uh, where I had the opportunity to meet uh, many um, of uh, the amazing ladies uh, during um, um, one of the conferences uh, in 2022 at Solar Paces. Excellent, welcome Sabrina. We're really looking forward to hearing uh, your presentation. Next, I'd like uh, you to meet Ye, yeah, please, if you, Ye, yeah, you could introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Belen, uh, and very thanks for you to the ATA Insights and also the Women Plus 
and the CSP to give me this uh, opportunity to do a presentation here. I'm Ye Wang, and I'm a research fellow at the uh, Australian National University in the solar thermal group. My background is in mechanical engineering, and I did uh, a lot of receiver designs uh, in my master's and PhD uh, study and currently I'm working on um, mostly uh, heliostat field uh, techno-economic analysis of CSP systems and also CSP for uh, industrial processes. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much. You have to know that it's 11 p.m. where Ye is, so she's making an effort to be here and we appreciate <laughs> that very much because it's 1 p.m. here, but it's 11 p.m. right there. So next, I'd like you to know Natalie, who is someone you probably know, and she's also making an effort. It's really early in Washington, D.C. But Natalie, please, <laughs> could you introduce yourself? Thank you so much, Belen. Thank you to ATA Insights and Women in CSP as well for having all of us for this great session. Um, I'm, uh, I've been in the United States my, most of my life, uh, born in California and then moved to the East Coast for college. Uh, studied chemical engineering also, uh, Sabrina, but I switched mm -hmm. to electrical engineering partway through. And then I actually went into um, cybersecurity and spent 33 years in that field um, at, a, at a consulting firm. But over the last uh, 10 years, I've been getting more and more involved with concentrated solar power, as you'll hear more in our story, and uh, am now the vice president of operations for uh, our company 24-7. Lovely to be here. Thank you very much, ladies. As you can see, you have quite a lot of knowledge right here in this room. And thank you very much for everybody that is there. I can see from the chat a lot of people that are old friends, you know, not because they're old, but because we've been friends for so long. So welcome, everyone. Okay, this is how it's going to work. We're going to have three presentations. And I'm fully expecting a lot of questions at the end because it's very rare that you're going to get these experts here, like in your fingertips that are able to answer these things for you. And also because, uh, you know, I know a lot of people here are really CSP fans and I'm sure there is some technical considerations they like uh, they like uh, um, answered. So presentations we'll do Sabrina, yeah, and Natalie. I'm going to ask you guys that to send your questions, please you use the Q&A box at the bottom, okay? And just one more thing, we're recording this session, so you be able to watch it again and we'll have the materials sent to you okay so without further ado i'd like for sabrina actually lucia is going to send, <clears throat> share your presentation from the tech deck so that you can deliver your presentation and we'll take it from there so lucia go right ahead here we go Great. go ahead sabrina thank you very much Valine, and uh Thanks, Luti, uh, for helping me out uh, today uh, with the presentation. Um, yeah, so um, uh, I will start first this webinar introducing the subject of small scale CSP. Um, um, it's something yeah, that, uh, that is uh, a lot of interest uh, for me uh, and for um, and uh, and for many uh, of us uh, as um, uh, and. Uh, that is in our group uh, that I will uh, introduce um, a bit uh, further. Um, I wanted, before I, I would enter the subject, um, to mention that uh, for every story, there is a beginning. And uh, the beginning of a woman um, in concentrated solar started um, at the Solar Paces conference in Albuquerque in 2022, um, where um, the idea of creating a group uh, of women in CSP uh, did start, and that was uh, uh, by Alina, which was, I think, a brilliant idea. And um, what I'm showing here uh, in the slides are uh, the active members um, that do a lot of work behind the scene, um, very uh, dedicated um, uh, to uh, bring uh, uh, CSP uh, to be known, uh, and they come from diverse uh, backgrounds and sectors uh, from all over the world. Um, so um, feel free if you want to join us, uh, you can uh, contact us uh, in LinkedIn, uh, and there are also other means such as with Instagram as well. Um, with that said, um, I uh, wanted to first um, introduce the subject of CSP, but be before that, and probably, um, yeah, if you go uh, to the next slide, uh, Lucia. 
So this I have already done. So yes, in this slide, um, what I wanted us uh, to understand, and I think that many of you might be already familiar, um, is uh, to understand the needs uh, of energy um, in um, many communities in remote areas. Um, uh, what is really surprising that even in 2020, about 10% of the population in the world does not have access to energy as a basic need. And that was uh, um, from uh, the World Bank re report. And um, these are the numbers that you see on the slide, but um, what is also uh, good to mention is that most of this population lives in region in um, uh, sub-Saharan, um, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, um, in Latin America, or in India, where radiation levels uh, show a promising uh, opportunity for small-scale. Um, CSP. Um, if we go to the next slide, please, uh, Lucia. Um, for those not familiar with concentrated solar power, and I'm pretty sure that Yi and Natalie will dive uh, even more into the, the subject. Um, uh, what I just wanted uh, to show here uh, is the principle uh, of uh, the concentrated solar power. Uh, there are few types of concentrated um, solar power systems um, that are already in use. And what I'm showing here is uh, the example of a parabolic trough um, where uh, the principle uh, consists in having a um, a set of mirrors uh, that would concentrate the sunlight uh, into a receiver uh, where the energy uh, is uh, being transferred into a heat uh, um, medium. Uh, and that heat can be used either to generate electricity uh, directly or be stored for later use. Um, what we need to understand is when we speak about large scale, this would be in the order of 100 megawatts, while uh, with the small scale, it's more uh, something in the region of 100 kilowatts up to 2 megawatts that can be uh, built uh, into modules um, and uh, be, um, be added on if we need more capacity. Um, I would like to move now into the next slide, please, uh, Lucia. Great. Um, in this slide, um, really, I wanted to show uh, what is the potential of small scale uh, CSP. Um, um, in terms of uh, the technology impact, um, um, uh, the small scale, CSP uh, does have the potential for various applications, such as heating um, uh, or the cooling, such as the air conditioning for uh, power generation or desalination. Um, it is as well uh, more efficient than uh, the larger um, uh, uh, CSP mainly because of the smallest scale um, uh, and um, of uh, the towers. Um, and also uh, there is less uh, water being consumed. Um, we can use, for example, air for uh, the cooling. Um, and uh, socially, um, the small scale uh, CSP um, uh, promotes energy independence uh, by building resilience to any disruption in uh, the network. Um, it provides educational opportunities uh, by fostering local expertise um, and as well uh, the social equity um, in marginalized communities uh, by uh, bringing uh, the energy uh, 
to them at the same level as in the urban areas. Economically, it creates uh, local job opportunities um, and at the same time, it would allow uh, uh, the sourcing of the components and the assembly of, um, of these components locally. Um, and as uh, when we might know uh, in uh, these uh, remote areas, uh, bringing electricity uh, would cost even more than um, uh, than um, bringing it to, uh, for example, to the urban area. So uh, the cost of electricity generated uh, by a uh, small scale uh, CSP can be actually competitive um, with uh, um, with the, uh, with the electricity generation in this region. Economically, um, uh, or um, um, what I wanted uh, to mention that in terms of environment, it fosters the agriculture uh, practices by um, bringing uh, potable water through desalination in these areas. Um, and also, um, it uh, um, creates resilience to the climate change in case, for example, of severe uh, weather conditions. So all of these are really um, benefits that uh, we should be, um, yeah, that uh, we should know in regards to the small scale uh, CSP. And that would um, lead me to the next slide, please, Lucia. Um, what I wanted to mention here uh, is that there are a combination of financial incentives, um, supportive uh, policy frameworks and increased uh, research and development uh, fundings and knowledge sharing initiatives that uh, all, all of this would help to reduce the cost of uh, the small scale um, CSP and as well to accelerate the adoption um, of, um, of uh, this technology as a uh, renewable energy uh, source. And I want to end up um, uh, with the last slide, uh, if you can, Lucia. Um, yeah, so after uh, mentioning the impact and the benefit of the small scale uh, uh, CSP, uh, what I want to show in the slides are the examples um, uh, that, um, that show how uh, is the variety of the projects that uh, we can make um, in relation with the, with the small scale CSP. Um, the first one that we see, for example, uh, um, uh, is the Polyphem, uh, which was a project um, uh, that ended uh, um, uh, about uh, two years ago. Um, but uh, the aim of that project uh, was to generate electricity in a way uh, that we can sell it to a um, flexible market. Um, and that is uh, uh, the case, for example, in Europe. Um, the second one, uh, which is also one other application of the small scale, uh, CSP is to use it uh, for uh, the heat uh, generation, uh, as um, is uh, the case here for this brewery in Spain. Um, and then uh, there are also the two um, the two uh, last projects that I'm showing here, uh, where um, the CSP uh, was used mainly for uh, the generation of the power and desalination. So um, this, I hope, uh, was um, uh, this overview of the benefits uh, of the small scale uh, 
TSP. And I'm really looking forward uh, to the speeches of Ye and of Natalie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sabrina, for that intro introductory presentation about all of the possibilities that small scale CSP has and all of the projects actually as very interesting projects around the world. Um, let us continue to the next presentation. Yeah, if you don't mind sharing your uh, presentation and uh, and also taking the mute of your microphone. And for the people in the audience, do not be shy. Send your questions. Remember to send it through the Q&A box so that we can manage them properly rather than the chat that get a little bit lost, okay? Uh, okay, yeah, go right ahead. Thank you, Belen. The uh, screen is sharing okay? Yes, it's sharing okay and we can hear you perfect. So we're right ahead. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, also thank uh, Sabrina's presentation. I think she has covered a lot of uh, example projects for small scale CSP. And in this presentation, I will present a more general overview of small scale CSP systems. And I will start by introducing the concentrated solar power systems, especially for those less familiar with this technology. Then I will focus on small scale CSP systems, discussing uh, existing plants and their general features. A typical CSP plant consists of a solar collector focusing solar energy onto a receiver, which then transforms this concentrated sunlight into heat for a working fluid. This fluid drives a turbine to generate electricity, and the excess heat is stored for use during non-sunny periods. There are four primary types of solar concentrators, uh, linear fresnel and parabolic trough systems, which offers lower concentration ratio and operate at lower temperatures. And central receiver systems and parabolic dish systems, which provide higher concentration ratios due to their two axis tracking and they working at higher temperatures. And this figure illustrates the global CSP power capacity under construction in uh, 2019, highlighting the market dominance of parabolic trough and uh, central towers technologies. And the real more trough plants are being built and designed, and the total um, power capacity of the powers, uh, tower system is around twice that of the power capacity of the troughs. And it's also worth noting that the average power capacity per plant for trough and tower system is around 89 and uh, 207 megawatt, respectively. Basically, the implementations are all in large scale scenarios. But why not small scale CSP systems? And there are still some barriers, like no uh, low awareness, unattractive payback periods. And although there are many CST, uh, CSP testing facilities in small scales, um, the initial in estimate is huge. I can't, um, the, the figures here didn't list all of them. There are many, many testing facilities. They are just some examples. But nevertheless, there are lots of good features about uh, small scale CSP systems, which is the focus we are talking uh, today. Small-scale uh, small CSP system typically under uh, one megawatt or two megawatt, and are well suited for off-grid applications, and uh, uh, also very efficiently serve various industrial processes. And before jumping into the details, um, let's take a glance at the comparison between CSP with PV and wind systems. And since 2010, CSP costs have reduced. Um, around 67%. And a crucial aspect of recent CSP projects is their integration with thermal storage, making them more competitive, which I will talk more in the next slide. The second point here is that PV and wind systems are modular. Their price was reduced by massive production when the technology is relatively mature, but not yet CSP. It still have a big variety in CSP uh, design. And it is a common sense that customized products are more expensive. Likewise, uh, standardization of CSP components could further lower cost, enhancing its competitiveness. 
for small scale CSP, we did a techno economic analysis and uh, using a dish concentrators, two tank molten salt storage, and a supercritical CO2 power block. And we compared the labelized cost of electricity with a PV battery system. Um, I might need to uh, first explain what is capacity factor. It is a ratio between the actual electricity generated by the system to the system nameplate and the uh, annual production. And uh, 100% capacity factor means uh, the electricity generation is continuous throughout the year. So as you can see, um, despite the lower cost of PV panels, when storage is required for continuous electricity, um, CSP becomes a more competitive option. And uh, on this slide, keep talking about small scale. A small scale system is actually more efficient this is due to the physics of heliostat field. As you can see, for different heliostat in different locations in the field, the further heliostat is from the tower, the larger the spot size on the receiver due to the unavoidable sun shape and astigmatism effect. Thus, closer heliostats lead to higher concentration ratios and higher efficiencies. And then a study from NREL also shows that a smaller power rating results in increased uh, system efficiency. And consider the example of bus or solar system. And the smaller field is more efficient than the big heliostat field. It effectively reduced the reflector area and leading to significant savings in capital and operational expenditures. Its design um, also allows for um, unlimited scalability. Um, Bus Solar is also currently constructing a new uh, 30, a 30 megawatt uh, commercial plant in South Australia. And there are more uh, examples. I think Natili uh, will talk more on this topic later. And focus on industrial applications. Uh, small scale CSP systems are part uh, particularly advantageous. Um, higher working temperatures and um, um, concentration ratios enable smaller optimal system scale, as you can see. And there is also a huge need for industrial process, and much of it at high temperatures. And uh, in regions like Pilbara in Australia, with plentiful solar resources, and our study have shown that modular CSP is the most effective renewable option for higher temperature industrial uh, process heat. Mm, here are some examples. Heliogen has innovatively used smart small heliostats and cavity receivers to generate heat exceed 1000 degrees C. And they are exploring, uh, exploring uh, applications like centric particle receivers for high temperature heat supply, aiming to decarbonize industrial processes. Mm, another example worth mentioning is the big dish. Dishes are the most efficient um, CSP systems mm, among all the other types, requiring uh, significantly less space and providing high efficiency compared to designs like uh, Scheffler dishes. Despite their um, limited commercial use globally, companies like Sunrise CSP are actively constructing dish systems, including the um, India MSA dish. It is the same design as the original ANU Big Dish um, for off-grid applications. And these initiatives are part of a broader strategy to achieve uh, carbon neutral in the MSA region with five years. Uh, a, a brief summary, um, small-scale CSP systems offering a promising solution for off-grade and industrial uh, applications due to their efficiencies, and which often uh, surpasses that of larger-scale systems. And their modular design not only saves capex and opex, but also poses no limitation in terms of uh, scalability. The integration of thermal storage with CSP enhances its competitiveness against the PV and wind systems. And looking forward, the standardization of components could further reduce cost, 
positioning CSP as an increasingly viable option in the renewable energy landscape. Mm, thank you for your attention. This is my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, in only a few minutes, you've managed to drive us through all of the main technologies, all of the main pros and cons, all of the main numbers. So that's been quite impressive. Uh, it was concise, but it was really impactful. And there is a few questions already for that that we'll take later and more hopefully that will be sent. Uh, and I have also my very own questions. Uh, we still have one presentation, of course. And uh, Natalie, I think this is your time. They've been, I, I love your, I love CSP badge, by the way. Tough class. Thank you. <laughs> Word for you. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you share your screen and you begin your presentation and, um, yeah, and then, you know, we'll have a little bit of more of a conversation. Excellent. Go Fantastic. right ahead. We can see the, the, the presentation. Perfect. So right ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Belen. And I'm so um, thrilled to be part of this amazing group of people. Uh, Sabrina and Ye have done um, a wonderful job of setting the stage. And um, hopefully my presentation will uh, follow on and pick up on some of the key themes. Um, I don't think I need to tell you more about why the CSP at the small scale is so important. Um, and uh, maybe I can just get right into it. But I did want to say it at the beginning, and I think Ye also picked up on this, that CSP has had a reputation for being complex and expensive. And as Ye pointed out very well, in the small scale CSP, um, we can envision a simple, affordable, modular system that's factory producible that allows us to bring the price down and be much less complex. And our approach in particular has very few moving parts. It's easy to construct with local labor, allows for generation of heat and electricity, as has been discussed. And, and what I love about it is that it can be um, operational with the very first module. So you build one module, you're already operating, and then you can be building two, three, four, five modules beyond that. But um, it, it allows you to get up and running quickly. All right, so quick summary of our company. Um, many or most of you, I saw a lot of the names in the uh, chat, and I know I, I recognize many of you, and I know that you all know um, our founder and CEO, Bruce Anderson. Um, he has been talking about um, his ideas and technology at conferences around the world for a number of years, and I've been fortunate enough to travel with him to do that. Um, he's a graduate of MIT with engineering and architecture degrees. Um, again, most of you know he's been an entrepreneur in solar energy for a long time. This particular company, 24-7 Solar, uh, he founded this to commercialize technology that he developed. Um, pieces of this was developed with David Gordon Wilson, a professor at MIT, long ago, and, and DOE helped to fund some of that early technology. But it has come a long way, and those of you who haven't heard uh, about this lately, you will hear more today. Uh, we have a lot of global development partners listed at the bottom are our key partners. Um, we've architected an overall integrated system. We've modeled and tested our key proprietary subsystems that I'll talk about. And we've identified and sourced ad additional subsystems like heliostats um, that are widely available. Our CEO and global sales team, and I'll show you more about where we are around the world, uh, are contributing to a large pipeline of um, sales across multiple continents and multiple use cases that I'll talk about. We, ha we also have over 30 patents worldwide, uh, both issued and pending. <clears throat> so I feel like I don't need to explain this as much now that you've heard from Sabrina and Ye, but I do want to tell you a little bit more. This slide really shows, highlights the key elements of our approach. On the left, first, is our proprietary 24-7 solar receiver. As you've heard, we convert solar light from heliostats, but a difference of our system is that we heat ambient pressure air, and we heat it to 1,000 degrees centigrade, which is much higher than conventional CSP that typically operates below 650 centigrade. And typically, these systems are in a pressurized closed system. Our design allows, as Ye pointed out, for much higher efficiency electricity production. And we also produce heat that's suitable for high temperature ind industrial processes that have been discussed a bit briefly. In the middle, second, is our thermal energy storage subsystem. 
It stores heat. And again, there was a question in the chat about this already, about what, what is the best way to store this heat. For us, it's inexpensive, abundant materials like ordinary sand or iron slag, which is a waste product associated with steel production in very simple um, containers. Um, these materials don't carry operational and environmental issues that have been associated with molten salt storage, and they don't degrade over time. Our, th our third on the right side, the proprietary Brayton cycle turbine, it takes the ambient pressure hot air that I described earlier from the solar receiver and converts it to both heat and electricity without emissions. It also can be used um, in our thermal storage system. We've um, used it to convert the stored heat back to electricity without combustion. When the turbine produces electricity, it at the same time produces 250 centigrade heat that can be used for industrial processes. So in the smaller scale examples where you're in a rural situation, it might be um, for drying crops and some of the other examples that Sabrina talked about. In um, other situations where you have larger industrial um, operations, the heat can be used for those as well. Um, this turbine does not require any water to operate. Um, so it's not a steam turbine, which is part of what was described earlier. Um, this is a hot air uh, Brayton cycle turbine. It's a distinct advantage because where CSP is popular and um, a good uh, application is in situations where it's very sunny and typically these areas are hot, dry much of the year and water is really a precious commodity in these regions. So how it works together, um, I'm, I'm going to show you right away. This is the uh, way that our system goes together and it is um, integrated into a, originally this module is a 400 kilowatt commercial 24 seven solar plant. This particular module has been produced recently, I mean, sorry, purchased recently by India's largest uh, utility and it's for them to avoid emissions from coal plants. Um, it will be built this calendar year, and you've seen from both Sabrina and Ye similar small-scale CSP designs, but again, the different technologies for the receiver, the turbines, and the storage, um, in our case, from what you might have seen. So I don't think I need to repeat this, but I will briefly show you that on the left, you've got your sun tracking mirrors, of course, with the, uh, the smart software, smart control software. It works together to uh, ensure that the mirrors are delivering optimum light to the um, proprietary receiver that's on top of the tower. So this is one of the tower systems that um, Ye um, pointed out in her slides. That um, basically heats that ambient pressure, hot air, 1000 degrees centigrade. And then in the tower are ducting and blowers and dampers that are used to channel that hot air to both the thermal storage and to the turbine. The plant can be assembled by local workers. So this is to the point that has been brought up earlier today that it's really important in these regions to be able to use local workers and have local content. Um, they can install and connect the subsystems, uh, including the field of commercially available heliostats, thermal storage subassemblies, proprietary receiver and turbine subassemblies, and the locally sourced materials of the tower assembly that includes the ducting and blowers. As we've said earlier, all of these parts can be factory produced, um, which will bring the prices down. Um, they can be assembled at the site as a single module initially so that you're operating immediately with 400 kilowatt power, or you can scale this as a farm of 10 or dozens of modules to produce both electricity and heat around the clock at any required capacity. An important consideration that I just really want to make is that every piece of this plant can be mass produced in the factory, which allows for the price to drop dramatically as megawatts are installed around the globe. And I think Ye presented that very well in her presentation. So very briefly, I want to go over a few case studies, um, use cases, I should say, that are um, what our customers around the globe are telling us are important to them for at least the small scale CSP. So in this particular case, we're referring to this as a carbon free green economic development zone or specifically rural communities that don't have access necessarily to the grid or the power is very expensive where they are. So many of these underserved regions do in fact have ample sunlight that is appropriate for CSP. 
And the modular nature of the system allows us to build in stages, as I mentioned. So as the communities grow, the uh, power generation can grow to um, scale to accommodate their needs. So we can provide, as I mentioned, both electricity and heat needed for industrial development. And this allows also for a substantial job creation locally. Just as another point about the turbines, we don't know anyone else that's not using the steam turbines. And the challenge with the steam turbines is that they're very large. They require a lot of maintenance, a lot of water, of course, and they don't lend themselves easily to modular development. In a second case, um, for the mining industry, while we have a lot of interest from mines in general, the mining sector is under incredible pressure um, to ensure that the um, energy transition is done in a sustainable manner. So mining um, for these transition materials for the clean energy transition are being required to use clean sources of power, otherwise mining clean min minerals for green mining doesn't really make sense unless you're also using clean power. CSP can help these existing mines in remote locations in particular reduce dependence on diesel gen sets, which are very expensive and dirty, and on natural gas. <clears throat> in the third use case, green hydrogen, this is the holy grail to replace fossil fuels in sectors where fossil fuels are hard to abate, like industry and transportation. But hydrogen is only green if it's produced using clean energy. CSP can provide both the electricity and the heat necessary to power what we think of as the most efficient <clears throat> of the hydrogen electrolyzers, which are called solid oxide electrolyzers. <clears throat> and um, in this particular case, this electrolyzer benefits from having both the electricity and the heat. And then in the final use case that I'll present today, nearly two thirds of industrial energy consumption is used to produce heat for industrial processes. Almost all of this is currently supplied using fossil fuels, as you well know. CSP can provide both clean process heat and electricity. The heat can be provided at almost any temperature. And again, for our system, we can go to 1,000 degrees centigrade. It's something that PV and wind alone cannot do. So briefly illustrated here is just meant to show you the demand around the globe that we see, and this is just for our system, and you've, you've seen many other examples of systems today. Around the globe, there's high, high demand for concentrated solar power, and especially of the kind that's small scale, modular, factory producible, creates um, economic stability for communities that are not easily connected to the grid or where it's too expensive. So we are really excited about this, and these represent um, places where we are in conversations through our global sales team in various stages of discussion. And again, our first plant being built in India um, this year um, will be a 400 kilowatt system. Thank you very much. I will turn it back over and I welcome questions. Thank you very much, Natalie. Do give us so much detail into what you guys are doing. It's really exciting. Congratulations on this plant in, in India. And uh, all of the work that I think that you're doing, you know, developing these conversations, it's helping all of the sector, you know, because it's, it's really important, you know, that we get the message across that all of this can be done with, uh, with solar. So thank you. I'm going to ask you when you can to take that off so that we can have a conversation and go into the questions. If I, I just wanted to ask a calibration question, if you like. Um, But then you're muted. All right, so there, there you go. So this happens mm -hmm. to everyone. You know, sorry about that. I kept talking. Um, so the I wanted to ask you guys a bit of a calibration question. What is small scale? Um, when we say small scale, what do we mean? Does it go kilowatts? Does it, can it can get into the watts? Can it get into the, like mm -hmm. uh, into the megawatts? Uh, what do we call? Because this is a very important question, and more importantly, uh, Ye spoke about the good things that we can get out of a small scale. 
when, like what it would be the, sort of an optimal size or what are optimal sizes? So let's do this first and then we'll go into the questions because there is a lot of questions just to make sure. You know, I tell you, I am in a microgrids uh, group, you know, a consortia doing microgrids across Africa. And half of our discussions is, are we microgrids or are we mini grids? Because apparently there is difference, although it's not clear what, right? So let's talk about what's the small scale CSP. Who wants to start? Sabrina, since you were. Yes, uh, so uh, maybe I'll have uh, just to start based on what I've read, but uh, I'm pretty sure that you and Natalie will add on. But for me, it depends on the needs uh, that uh, that we have. Um, I think the good thing about small scale CSP is that we can customize it. Uh, so if we need only 50 uh, kilowatt for a particular application, we might just install that, that capacity and then build up um, from there. Um, the range that I've seen um, were um, uh, anywhere from 50, 80 to about uh, two megawatts, um, uh, but I'm pretty sure the EA or, or Natalie will, will also add uh, more information into this. Uh. Yeah, I, I don't really differentiate small scale so much because as you saw from our approach, you know, we're starting at a 400 kilowatt module and it can be scaled. I, th I saw a message in the Q&A that says, what's the largest capacity? And I don't know if that question was for us, but really there is no limit. I mean, we have been in conversations with customers around the world that want, you know, hundreds of megawatts or gigawatts and our system can scale to that. You know, you just build more and more modules, but small scale. I mean, I thought that EA had a, a, an interesting, you know, description of it being, you know, maybe 50 to 80 kilowatts all the way up to two megawatts. I mean, that that seems reasonable to me, but I, for us, there's no limit. Up to two megawatts then, yeah. I think it's a good question and discussion. In terms of the, the, the definition of small scale on my slides, I saw from a literature that um, he given a review of all the small scale systems and he defined it as, say, one lower than one megawatt electric system as a smaller scale. Um, but actually, there doesn't have really harsh boundary, which one is small, which one is big, but just relatively. And in terms of which one is the best scale to like uh, the which one is the best modular design um, scale. So I think it depends on the um, working temperature and uh, the type of the um, concentrating system, like whether it's trough or dish, uh, they're totally different. And the, what kind of temperature range, whether it's working at 200 degrees C or 800 degrees C or even higher 100, 1000 degrees C, um, there have specific optimal scale for each application, I think. Excellent, thank you very much for clarifying. So it's pretty wide from what I can see, but of course, like someone that is looking at you know, hundreds of megawatts, you know, very common in hydrogen, that we consider five megas for an electrolyzer tiny, you know, even though, don't get me wrong, the projects that are going on right now are like, those are like on the larger side, but you know, just, just to make an idea. Okay, shall we go with the questions that we have there since they've been sent and we have eight open. So Juan Ignacio, uh, old friend, Hi, Juan Ignacio, and Bruce is also there, so hi, Bruce, too. Uh, I'd like to, uh, he asks, which storage system would be recommended for small-scale CSP? You've already kind of answered that, Natalie, but if you want, uh, because you've mentioned this question, but if you uh, want to add anything, and, and yeah, and Sabrina, to, to help as well? Yeah, I, I'm not saying that it's the only recommended, but for us, what we found that works best for our system is a very simple, you know, these renewable material, or yeah, renewable materials readily available. Um, you, you can do more complicated things like ceramics, but iron slag and simple sand, you know, certainly uh, are serving us well. And what I love about that is that they are, um, they'll last a long time, decades, you know, they don't degrade, um, they don't have negative environmental impact, um, easy to um, recycle when you're done if you ever need to disassemble a plant. So there are a lot of advantages that we see to that. Yeah, 
Sabrina? Um, just adding something to this. Um, yeah, does it also depend on the application and on the temperature levels? Um, uh, for example, if we need heat uh, at certain temperature, which is low, uh, below, um, 150 degrees C, we can use a simple system such as uh, with hot water. Um, uh, for example, with the pollution that was with the thermal oil. Um, so yeah, there are also um, uh, various um, uh, various options uh, that um, uh, that we can use depending on the temperature on the application. Um, this is my thought on that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you want to add something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I also agree. And uh, in addition to that, I think the um, heat transfer medium is also uh, another factor to con consider in addition to working temperature and uh, applications. Because, for example, the working fluid in the receiver, and while, for example, if it's molten salt directly, you would maybe just use molten salt tank as storage. And if the heat transfer medium is particle, you can just use particle storage tank. And But for example, if the working fluid is air or helium, some gas, maybe you can consider a pack bed storage. So mm, different heat transfer medium in the receiver also mm, should consider the integration with the storage. Excellent. Um, here is a question from Ahmed that is interesting. He says, you mentioned that small-scale CSP plants can be also designed for producing heat energy for industrial processes. What is the difference between this concept and C, uh, CSH, which is something that we've worked as well? So concentrated heat, concentrated solar heat. It would essentially be the same, right, or very similar? Yeah? OK. Yeah. Is that simple? I mean. What, what from my uh, this question is for you, Natalie. So what I understand is you can choose what you want from that system, correct? If you want electricity, if you want heat. Yes. So it's a bit yes, like absolutely. What you need. Mm. Yeah, like our India customer is only using the electricity, but we have a lot of customers that are interested in using both, you know, the electricity and the heat. Another question for you, Natalie: Can these projects be built today without grants of subsidies? Yeah, and absolutely. Can? Yeah. Yes, they can. We um, we are definitely in India. We're not using any grants or subsidies, um, so that can be done. <laughs> There's a question here that is very intriguing, actually. And it was in my list. Okay. Basically, there is a. It goes in a different way, but basically, what it asks is, look, we've known about this. We've had this for a while now. What is the problem? What is hindering the um, the development of these projects. And I, I, I'm I interested in this too, because from what I can see, it's like literally the whole package. You know, it's the whole package. You can have electricity, you can have heat, uh, you can create jobs. So what is the issue? I mean, I understand that the anatomized <coughs> market, you know, where there is a lot of the little developments is always hard. It's the same problem with the microgrids as well, actually, same sort of issue. But what is hindering like faster development of these projects? Well, I can't answer it for everybody, but for our particular project, you know, the, the obvious um, hindrance has been for us, um, the need to raise the capital for us to, um, you know, finalize development, to be able to um, go into um, cost sharing situations with customers for some of the pilot plants. Um, so we, we needed to raise a very large amount of money over the years. and. As many of you out there know, the market has been <laughs> unstable. You know, there have been good years and bad years for raising uh, funding. So we have, um, with the sale of this particular project in India, um, we do have the funding to build it, and we're very excited about that. But that it has taken a while. It does take a while. I think it's easier if you've got the money. Um, Sabrina, yeah, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, uh, what I think is that... Uh, what Natalie mentioned uh, uh, is indeed correct sometimes, uh, um, and this was also being shown by Ye in her presentation. Um, the cost must can be uh, one of the hurdles, uh, especially in collecting <laughs> the funds. Um, but it's more to understand what 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 are the real benefits 
for for example in comparison with the pv uh, and i think this is where uh, the csp uh, can make a big difference uh, in terms of uh, uh, um, yeah delivering uh, all uh, the heat and uh, and uh, the capability of the storage as well Yeah, there is two questions for you. One of them, I think you're typing, says between 100 kilowatts PV plant and 100 kilowatts CSP plant, which requires lar larger space and how do they compare in terms of CapEx? I think you were write in an answer, but perhaps you can just... Yeah, I think I, I'm typing a long answer for this question, actually. <laughs> it's hard to answer. And um, But uh, in short, we haven't carefully compared the land usage between PV and CSP. But generally, I think it's not a direct comparison because um, we need to also check capacity factor. So for PV system alone, it's definitely cheap than CSP, but considering capacity factor, only PV is on, is just provide maybe 20 to 30% of capacity without storage. But for CSP, it has storage unit and is the optimum uh, lower cost CSP system can reach around 80% capacity factor with the storage. So if we compare, when we compare PV and CSP, maybe we can specify certain capacity factor, say 20% capacity factor, which one is the best, and 80% capacity factor, which one is the more economic option, and how about 100% capacity factor? So, so different comparisons. Yeah, very different. Um, it's a bit like, you know, when you choose what to eat for dinner and you can pick between a steak and... Uh, and uh, I don't know asparagus, and then some chocolates, and <laughs> may have the same the same uh, calories, but it's very different outset. Um, okay, and another one is someone asks you here for a link to your, your institution when you can. And um, Natalie, uh, there's a question that you've already answered, but there's one here that says, "How did you get your panels washed? And yeah. how long did they last?" I saw that. Yeah. Well, the heliostats come from third-party suppliers, first of all. So. You know, in terms of how long do they last, do they resist harsh conditions, all of that, you know, has to come with some of the uh, guarantees and 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 uh, all of that from the supplier. But in terms of how they're washed, um, you know, we we anticipate in these small scale deployments them to be washed basically by hand using local labor, which is part of the building up of economic, you know, security and jobs for the local community. Um, you know, I imagine when you start getting into multi megawatts or gigawatts, you know, you're looking more at the machines that do the cleaning that we've seen, obviously, over the years with CS, large scale CSB. I mean, it also depends, you know, where you do it. For problem with this is everything depends. And the last question that I have saved here, because we don't have a lot more time, is the idea of women in CSP. I think it's a good one to close this, this webinar. You know, Michael here, Mike, you know, um, I don't know how to say this name properly. Uh, it says the love of the, the idea of women in CSP and, uh, you know, what can we learn from women in CSP? So Sabrina, I'm going to open it with you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Natalie and, and yeah, you can, you can add in here, I think. So go ahead, Sabrina. Yeah, I, I will start first. Uh, the, um, what I think is that uh, by making more uh, women visible um and um uh, and that is uh, for example in this webinar um and just creating uh, this networking and giving this helping hand as well to the women uh, that are also very early in their career uh to follow the same path so uh it's increasing visibility and giving support and uh, uh just creating these opportunities uh, for women in the field of the CSP. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina, well said. <clears throat> and I do want to give uh, Belen another, you know, very big applause for all that she's done to ensure that women in CSP have a voice, are visible. She puts together her panels with this in mind. Um, and I think that's what conference organizers need to do. I also think that it's important for employers to look deeply at the talent that's out there instead of just looking at the people they already know which maybe tends to be men you know in this field is look more deeply there's plenty of women i mean if you look at women in concentrated solar power there's there's so many women that are involved so i think employers should be looking at where how do i find you 
how do I, you know, bring you in to this project and give you more experience and let you show us what we can do. So I do think that women in CSP is an awesome resource to leverage for all of you out there that don't know um, where to find women that are competent and capable in this field. And yeah, did you want to give us a few words also before yeah, you know we let you go off to sleep? <laughs> It's, it's really appreciated and uh, for the Women Plus CSP uh, organization. And I think for, um, I think opportunities are really appreciated and support. So for example, um, letting more female researchers joining this community, um, letting them um, feeling no barriers and everything welcome and a lot of opportunities to learn, to contribute to. I think is really great and appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I have been involved through the years in a lot of like women initiatives. There is not that many women from the beginning we know. Uh, um, and uh, recently I was in an event in Turkey for geothermal. The geothermal girls in Turkey are very well organized. And they did this um, sort of gender workshop. And there was this man that kind of realized that we were in the middle of the workshop. He stood up and went like, oh, no, what am I doing in the women workshop? And I'm like, well, you know, you probably have something to learn. And he's like, yeah, but it's full of women. And like, yeah, that's how a woman feels every day in their job. You know, it's surrounded by men. He sat down and said, like, that's a good point. And he stayed, you know. And I think that's a, a little bit what I would say, like what I've seen through the years is that it's great when you know you guys realize that sometimes there might be just one woman in the whole uh in the whole floor you know and that we need a little bit more diversity um but i appreciate all the all the all the help uh through the years because um i think that um uh, that we've had certainly uh a lot of help also you know it's not only to say like the the parts where it went bad there's not that many women in csp but there's been a lot of support when there have been there at least i've had and natalie i'm sure you've had as well and i hope sabrina and you have enjoyed the same so thank you very much we will keep doing things like this i do make an effort to try and get women to all of the stuff that i do so um thank you natalie for being there thank you yeah thank you sabrina thank you for thinking of us when doing this this these webinars and we'll do more you know because it, this is a matter of time csp is going to have its time because it is simply just such a great solution so all of the work that we're doing we're going to see increase attention i think over the next three four years so our our job is certainly very important Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you. Take care. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.